you find the fibula and the perineal tendons. So posterior is the right-hand side of the screen. You follow the fibula down. As you see, I'm sacrificing part of the screen, so I'm only, I'm not trying to get the whole footprint down as I come down so I can get my angle right. If you follow the perineal tendons down and round the fibula, you look for the point where the fibula disappears and that's where you get the long axis of the CFL ligament there. And you need to play with the angle a little bit, but that pretty much gives it to you. It also gives you the subtalar joint immediately beneath them at that point. And then you scan through the ligament. You see the image quality is poor here where the fibula head is disappearing. And if I want to tension the ligament now, I can do various maneuvers. Uh, if you invert the foot, you see that can lift the uh, perineal tendons nicely. I'll just pop the pointer back on there. These are the perineal tendons here. And drop it away. But also, everting can sometimes help you differentiate the structures. And also, just simply plantar flexing the foot as a patient will let you uh, does the same thing. I then like to turn the probe around. You need to make sure you've got plenty of jelly there. So I've turned the probe, I'll go back into uh, long axis of the ligament, turn the probe round, and there you see the short axis of the ligament. You've got the perineal tendons here, you've got the short axis of the ligament there. It's anisotropic there, so you can make it bright or dark, depending on what you need it to be to make it easy to follow. And then you follow it distally, and it flattens out and inserts in this region onto the calcaneus and you can follow it up under the tendons again. And then if you angle carefully, you can sometimes see it insert there, just there on the base of the fibula, which is less well seen with those angles.